Hello from me and this lovely uh, late October uh, day, beautiful sunshine here in South Wales in the United Kingdom. That <laughs> really does make a change. I'd also like to welcome the new people that uh, have joined from my written blog because I've moved my written blog over to the video blog. It's easier in some ways to do a video and if at some point I want to show you certain things I can show you but basically it's just easier for me to sit and talk to you like I do at the moment. Anyway, looking through my blogs, uh, I was looking through my past blogs, is 10 years of writing near enough and it's a journal of, uh, of my life with, uh, uh, with COPD. Anyone wants to read it, have a look at uh, bitsandbobs.co.uk uh, stroke COPD and you will see it but I was looking to see if there's anything worth repeating on here to you and I've made lots of mistakes there's no doubt about it uh, because CRPD is a learning experience and the best uh, advice I can give you with CRPD if you're quite new to this is to learn as much as you can about CRPD do as much research as you can uh, because by doing research you will learn so much and you started doing research by watching old me and <laughs> talking to you. Um, if you, you learn the best things to do, what not to do, uh, what to do and if you read my blogs as I say you will see what I should never have done but I'm trying to convey this on the video I will be as time goes by. The one thing that uh, I did strike me was how silly I have been in the past and um, that is as far as trying to do too much and I'm very careful now to pace myself, not to push myself. Now I know the body's got to keep moving and I always stress you've got to move your body. You can't sit watching the telly all the time because if you sit there with the remote all the time pressing the remote and you sit there and you just don't move then sadly you will die you know I can't be more honest than that if you keep your body moving and you keep doing things now you don't have to do things all the time but you know an hour or two a day there's plenty you know as long as you do get out of bed and keep moving and keep an interest you'll be fine but you must move that body but you mustn't overdo it now what I did is I used to go for a little trot around uh, before I was on oxygen and I had an oximeter, which as you would know is a little thing you put on the end of your finger to show you your blood saturation levels. Now blood saturation levels, I always say above 90, I won't worry too much. Some people say it should be above 92, but we we say 92 is, is, is a happy medium for us with COPD. Anything below 90 is a bit dodgy. Anything below 88, you should be on oxygen. And if you leave it below 88 for too long, you're in danger of harming your heart and uh, your liver, your kidneys and, and all your organs because they're just simply not getting enough oxygen and your brain isn't getting enough either. But uh, anyway, I had this oximeter and I would go for my little walks and the idea of the oximeter was to make sure that I wasn't getting too low on sats. And I would stop now and then and I'd take my sats and they would be 84. <laughs> 84. Now I should have been really worried about this but uh, I thought well, I'll be alright it'll get better and I kept this up for quite some time and I'd get home and as I didn't have oxygen them days and my saturation levels were very very slow to come up again above 90 they, you know they would, they would take an hour or two to get above 90 which you know I know now was absolutely stupid I put myself at risk in the end I uh, managed to do something to my heart. I, I uh, strained it was just something because it beats faster, it does all sorts of things when it's low on oxygen to try and make up. And I ended up with actual fibrillation, AF as it's called, uh, which is a very common complaint for us with CRPD. Uh, and uh, anyway, that was because I was, I was being stupid. Now, I had another time when I wanted to go for a little trot around with. Uh, 
with Lynn and I remember we went on this uh, on this walk. Uh, a walk for me was stop start of fair. I would walk a little tiny bit and stop, walk bit, stop, walk bit, stop. And uh, I at times was hanging over fences, literally hanging over fences to try and get my breath. And I don't know what my sats were, but they were probably at that stage in the 70s. And this was approaching when I was going to end up on oxygen. We had a heat wave here in uh, in Wales, and uh, that's a very unusual affair. It was a kid's holiday during the summer. We wanted to take them out to as many places as possible, and we on the third day, uh, they were due to go home that night. We took them out, and I remember I felt absolutely awful. We'd managed, you know, to uh, uh, to do it, but that night I went to bed. I stayed there. I wouldn't come downstairs. Lynn come up, make sure I'm alright. I said, I, I can't face the stairs no more. I didn't have a stair lift or anything then days. I, I used to have to walk up the stairs. And uh, I couldn't face going down the stairs. And I went down the stairs and I wanted to go to the toilet. I'd have to come up the stairs again. I just didn't have the energy. I decided then, because I belong to an organisation here called Breathe Easy, that I would have a word with our nurse. I had a word with our nurse and uh, she kindly got me in for a, an oxygen review. And they took me along for an oxygen review. Now, I was asked when I went for the oxygen review, if we, you are found to need oxygen, uh, would you use it? <laughs> well, I use it. Well, I wouldn't be here otherwise. Of course I use it. And she said, well, you'd be surprised how many people won't use it. And uh, it, it, it's such a stupid thing to do. But anyway, I, I had this assessment and I was put on four litres per minute for... Uh, whenever I uh, had to go walking about. I didn't need it sleeping there, and I didn't need it if I wasn't walking, but that's all changed now because that was some, some years ago. And I started using oxygen and I felt a lot better. Now, the lesson here is that uh, if you are prescribed oxygen, make sure you use it, because I know two people that were prescribed oxygen, they never used it, and sadly, they're not with us no more. Now, they thought maybe it was a bit wussy to be seen wearing oxygen, uh, that they didn't want their friends or to see them using oxygen, or uh, if they went out. Now, I'm a bit of an ambassador for oxygen. I will go anywhere. You know, I don't care where I go. I go shopping. Um, I go anywhere I want to go. I never get strange looks. I never get... Uh, well, most people just ignore me. They, they, it's as though... I haven't got the tube on. Sometimes kids look at me and uh, that's, uh, and I'm going, oh yeah, that's my moustache, you know. And they normally start laughing and the parents start laughing as well. No one queries it. I've only had one or two people ask me, you know, I said, well, why, why do you have to use oxygen? And I'd tell them, emphysema. And uh, there you go. Anyway, uh, another thing I want to, with oxygen is you may be surprised it don't stop you getting breathless. Now I remember going out with Lynn and uh, I had to keep stopping, stop, start, stop, start, had the oxygen and she said, well, I can't understand this. Why are you getting breathless? You've got oxygen. <laughs> it doesn't work that way. It doesn't stop you getting breathless. What it does is it saves your heart and everything else. So don't overdo it. And if you get prescribed oxygen, make sure you use it. Now, I use a mobility scooter as well. And the reason I use a mobility scooter, I went to Paynton Zoo in uh, Devon, uh, in the su southern England, southwest England, and uh, there was no way I was going to go around there and have a nice day. I went with Lynn and uh, we were away for a couple of days and I saw that they hired these machines, so I hired one. And I'd never had such a good day, or I hadn't had such a good day for probably quite a few years. And uh, I said, I said, Alina, I said, well, I get home and get one of these because there's no way I'm not going to do without. So I did buy one and I had a ramp, uh, not a ramp, I had a, a hoist put into the back of the car and I can hoist the thing in, I can hoist it out and I can go anywhere and I can have a good time. Lincoln walks at her own space and uh, I've got no worries at all. So, and this is, as you progress, is what happens with CRPD sometimes, but don't forget. If you've, if you've been recently diagnosed with CRPD, don't worry too much. It's taken me 
31 years to get where I am now with this illness and as you can see I'm still talking I'm still fine in many ways uh, I have to be careful uh, with uh, not to get with sick people and things like that I have to make sure I use oxygen and I do use a mobility scooter and I use other aids as well I mean, uh, talking about other aids uh, and everything you, those with very severe may find is that you've got problems bending down uh, putting socks on for example you can get a, a, a little thing that you put your socks on I've got one upstairs uh, you roll your socks onto this onto this thing and you put your feet in it and you, you pull these tags up and your socks are on your feet great you don't have to bend down because when you bend down what you're doing is you're crushing your lungs your lungs are normally a little bit longer because you've got uh, emphysema they don't go in and out like they normally would so when you bend over you crush them you haven't got the wind anyway and uh, it makes you very very breathless a grabber as well is another thing or a litter picker as some people call it you've probably seen people going around picking litter up and they've got one of these things and they like that they pick the litter up they put it in a bag whatever one of those that's great is to you can pick things off of the off of the floor a long handled uh, shoe horn that's handy putting your shoes on as well and of course in the shower a seat because if you sit down that's a lot better for you as well and it's essential to have grab brows as well now, all these things do help us with CRPD unfortunately it is a disabling condition in time but as I say don't worry too much if you've recently been diagnosed this is a very 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 slow progression and providing you don't smoke uh, you should be fine for years to come it's one of those things where we live for a long time and we've got to look after ourselves. Anyway, I've just rambled today, I haven't I? That's it for today. That's me without a hat today. I had a haircut. <laughs> Lynn does a good job. That's uh, me for now. I've rambled on enough. So uh, have a nice day, wherever in the world you are, because I know that this is seen from all over the world. I'll be back soon. And uh, for now, breathe easy. Bye-bye for now.